Good morning everyone. I've just been working on a video which I try and install as many plugins as I can without breaking the site which is going to be really interesting so watch out for that in the next week. But for today something equally interesting hopefully and that is how to make your website more readable. So I've got five top tips that you can easily implement to make your website content more sticky and to keep people more engaged as they read your articles. Let's get into it. Right, idea number one is to use this plugin called Worth the Read and this gives you a nice progress bar and also time to complete uh, feedback here. So as they're reading the article, not only do they get the time it's going to, uh, your readers get the time it's going to take them to read it, but as they scroll down, can you see you get this little progress bar that just runs along the top of the screen here. So you can just add this plugin, you can tweak it and I'll show you how you tweak the design of it in a second. But it's fantastic because as people are reading your content, they get feedback on how far they've got to go and I think that's going to make the content more sticky. This is the plugin I'm using. It's a free plugin. I will put a link in the description below. I've also set you up a free training website with this plugin pre-installed so you can go and test it out as well. Uh, it's a cool plugin. It's got 7,000 downloads growing pretty quickly and it's got nothing but five-star reviews mostly lately so it's pretty, it's pretty good. Let me just show you some of the settings that you get with it. So in your dashboard, if I go to my dashboard you see we've got this worth the read setting here and we've got a few things we can tweak but it's very powerful for what seems like a very simple idea so you can decide what kind of content you display it on post pages or your home page I think probably most likely for most sites you'll display it on your posts but it's up to you it also supports custom post types uh, you can also align it in different places so I think probably most sites will have it along the top you can have it down the sides or the bottom then you've got some other settings down here things like right to left support right to left language. You can also style it differently so you can change the thickness and the colors so you can keep it in uh, consistent with your branding. Then you can also tweak the time commitment. They call it time commitment. This is really the the, uh, the algorithm that works out how long people spend to, re to read. So you can tweak this down here so you can say actually I want to change the average number of words per minute people take to read your content. So I guess you could tailor that depending on how quick your audience reads. But you can tweak all this stuff and you can also change the style of that as well. So it's pretty, it's pretty powerful stuff. And I think it's a nice addition to a site. It's very lightweight and unobtrusive. But I think if you're into producing sort of longer form of content, then I think it's a, a great addition. Idea number two is to insert a table of contents block in at the top of all your posts. This again makes it easier for your readers to see what's in the post and also navigate to content, especially useful if you're using longer form of content. And the good news is there is now a table of contents block that comes with Gutenberg, just as standard. Now at the moment, this is only available within the Gutenberg plugin, but I imagine this will be coming to core. So let's just add the table of contents block. Here it is, it's just a standard block and it will just take your headings and automatically create a table of contents for you. Now at the moment you don't have too many options, well you have no options in terms of styling, but what you could do if you did want to style it, you just group it. So click on the three dots and click group and that basically puts that into a group. Let me show you this. So now that, that block is within the group and of course because it's now within a group we can style it. So if we select the group and we can do things like change the background colour and we could do things like add padding. And it's basically taken all my H2s, but if I do put an H3 in under football, let's say, let's put an H3, it will automatically update that. Let's put rules here. Can you see how it automatically updates up here? If there are some headings in your table of contents block that you don't want to show for whatever reason, then you just select the block itself and click on convert to static list. That just turns that into a list up here and then you can go into any list item you like and just remove it as you normally would. If you want even more control over the style of your table of contents, there is a cool plugin which I actually use on my own site called Heroic Table of Contents. Just gives you more options. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. The next idea is sticky headings. Here's an example of it here. So as I scroll down the page, you see how the football heading sticks to the top of the page. For as long as I'm reading about football, then I get to the next section, which is cricket and the football one goes up and then the cricket one is shown. This is all using a free plugin called the Sticky Block for Gutenberg Editor. I'll put a link to it in the description below for you. It's very, very simple to set up. There are just two things you need to do. You first need to add the Sticky Block itself. So the Sticky uh, plugin adds its own block called Sticky. You just add that 
and then you put anything within that block that you want to be sticky. So I've just put a paragraph block here. This is actually a paragraph block with large text. So that will stick to the top of the page. Within the sticky block itself, you can set it up so you have space between that and the top of the page. And that just means that block will then stick to the top of the page. The other clever thing it does though, can you see when I get to a certain point on the page, this starts to go upwards and that's called the push up. So to set that up, let me just show you how that works because this is the other critical bit within the sticky block itself. Let me just go back to the sticky block within this first column. You have this setting down here, which is called the push up element. And that is just basically a CSS class that you add into that. It can be called what you like. But then within your content itself, you just need to put that class name in here in additional CSS classes where you want that to start to push up. So I've put it in the penultimate paragraph within my football section. Another idea is to have a sticky table of contents. So this kind of builds on the sticky idea before. And all I've done is add the table of contents block over on the left instead of the sticky headings. And as I scroll here, can you see how this just is persistently now on the left? These are all linkable so people can click on these and it'll take them, take them to the right position within the content. Let me just show you behind the scenes on how this was done, but hopefully you can kind of work out how I did it. All I did was add the sticky block. Let's go to list view, add the sticky block. And within that I've added, I've just broken it. I've added a group block just so I can style the background. And within that I've put the generic table of contents block and I've just added the background color to the um, group block itself. Now, the only th other thing I've done in here in the table of, in the uh, sticky block, I've removed the push up element. And the final tip I have for you today is to become a better writer, which is an incredibly glib thing to say. But here are four books which I've personally found really useful improving my writing and also improving my storytelling and communication in general. So the first one is called Save the Cat, the last book on screenwriting you'll ever need. Now it's about screen, screenwriting, but actually if you can use these principles in your writing or if you're a creator of any kind. The next one is The Hero by Lee Child. It's just a very interesting book you know, on storytelling fundamentally. The next one is kind of quite American. It's called Cashvertising, uh, but it's fantastic in terms of the psychology of language and how we use language to move uh, prospects into customers. So it's definitely worth a read. Uh, these are all audiobooks as well, if you're into audiobooks. And the final one is called The Science of Storytelling, Why Stories Make Us Human and How to Tell Them Better by Will Storr. Another really interesting book, fundamentally about storytelling. So that's my five tips. I hope you find some value in those and you can use them on your own sites. If you have your own tips, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you're doing on your own sites to improve your content. If you can hit like on this video now, that'd be amazing because it really, 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 really helps spread the word of the channel. And as you probably know by now, every time you do hit that like button below, our cats get a little treat. So thanks again for watching, keep well, and I shall see you very soon.